Welcome to the first question. That special place here in the metaverse where we all seek the highest common denominator. And now let's join our guides to those farthest corners of our minds. Here we are with... Ladies and gentlemen, Pookie Amsterdam! And how about a warm welcome for Hydra Shafto? Welcome back to the first question. Oh, you better believe it. Welcome back. Welcome to the first question. The quiz show to the stars. If you have an answer, we have a question. Tonight we have a new kind of testimony to new user experience. I am Pookie Amsterdam and this is Hydra Shafto. Well, gosh, Poop, I remember being new and you know, it's gotten a lot better recently. And it's like the dawn of a new second life, although I am nostalgic for Grey Goo at times. Mm hmm. Well, here we are in the future and the past. And yeah, Hydra, I love being part of this horizon. It's a thrill every day here. Well, actually, I know what you mean. But one thrill I have, which I'm not sharing, is the thrill of this week's secret word. Mm -hmm. That's something that I have other people that can't find. They have to guess, and it's a tough one, I hope. Mm hmm. Well,. Tonight's panel, oh my God, is kind of proof positive that Second Life is doing something right. In fact, a lot right. On tonight's panel are three very new residents who have just joined. One, the CEO of a global company. One, a world-class blogger. Another, a college accommodation. And our first panelist is the man who is leading Second Life into that great future with strength, Humanity, vision, and kindness. What a panel. Let's bring them out. Okay. Our first panelist. Born creative. From the time he could hold a paintbrush, he wanted to be a painter. So he studied fine arts in college until he was nearly ready to graduate, then switched to economics. Because he wasn't sure that the life of a starving artist was one he was prepared to lead. He took a hard left went on to business school and graduated from Wharton. Portrait of a CEO as a young man. And being CEO of Linden Lab is a dream job for him. In his own words, Second Life is this magical combination of art, design, technology, economics, business, all things that he is dearly drawn to. Marvelous, majestic, multi-talented, our very own, M. Linden. Welcome, Em. Thank you, Pookie. Thank you. So what element of the periodic table do you most identify with and why? Well, I gave you three answers, Pookie. One is, uh, one is gold because I'm a fifth generation Californian. Mm -hmm. uh, but the next is uh, carbon because, you know, great things can happen under pressure. And then the third was uh, silicon because it's, uh, it's a very industrious element. Mm, and with gold, carbon, and silicon, I think you can go pretty far. All right. Very good. In fact, all the way, which you obviously have. And thank you so much for being here tonight, Em. Okay. My thank pleasure. you. Thank you. Next up, she is a science journalist who studied chemical engineering and a blogger for Smart Planet and other great publications. She loves interviewing people. A long trip she took for a story was going to uh, dinosaur digging with Jack Corner. Talk about a real-life Jurassic Park experience. Mm. She also was one of the first people to get her DNA tested. Yeah. Okay. You could call her a human guinea pig. Wow, that's fascinating. Isn't that amazing? Pookie. Yeah. Pookie called her and asked her to come into Second Life for the first time for the show, and she agreed. The adventurous and brilliant Sydney Caramel. Welcome aboard, Sydney. Hi. Okay, so uh, hey, what's Sydney. wrong with Sydney, and does it have anything to do with guinea pigs? Sydney. 
Sydney, what's your element? I am helium because when I enter a room, I fill the room with energy. And oh, yeah. if you ever inhaled helium, you'll know that laughter is contagious. And those are the moments I live for. But not the moments <laughs> that Balloon Boy's father lived for. I love it. Helium. Yeah. Okay. All right. And thank you and welcome. Thanks so much for coming. You are it's awesome. Just awesome. All right, our next panelist. After reading an extensive interview with him on Gizmag, I was struck by his incredible intelligence and sixth sense. Plus, there was a picture of Second Life in the article, so I contacted him. He's been an answer to a first question and a founding member of the Singularity University. He is the CEO of the Institute for Global Futures, which is a San Francisco-based think tank that forecasts innovations and trends. Mike Wallace of 60 Minutes profiled him as one of the world's greatest minds in his book, 50 Years From Today. So a great honor to have him back to the Future Guru Haiku. Welcome, Future. Hi there. How is everyone? Uh, great. Great Happy to see you. Great to mm -hmm. be here. Great to be here. Thanks. I'm going to ask you to start singing any minute, man. Okay. Oh, so. oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. I can do that. I can do that. All right. She could do it. You could do it. Okay. So tell <laughs> us, what, what element of the periodic table do you most identify with and why? Well, clearly it's xenon. Xenon. And not just because it has an atomic weight of 131.293, or mm -hmm. density of 5.9. It's because in the future, it will be harnessed to take us into multiple realities, multiple worlds. And of course, what's better than Second Life to preview that? Absolutely. I love it. May the Xenon be with you. Thank you. You got it. And last stop. Fate happens in Second Life, and last night when a beam of new energy appeared in the dome in the form of this man, Pookie knew he was special. He is new. He's also proof of the trend of high-level engagement that Second Life is. Currently a faculty member at a large state research university in Florida, he has worked around the country and around the globe. He is going out there a newbie and coming back a star. So meet Professor Spring Springflower. Welcome aboard, Professor. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. And I'm glad to say that large university is Florida International University. Okay. So what's your element, Professor? Well, I believe N spilled my thunder with silicon. But silicon it is. I mean, I can't think of no element more appropriate for second life. It's great. And, uh, you know, this fan, it's basic. And uh, it's an illustrious panel, indeed, full of energy, light, music, and beauty. So let's get going. Now it's time for Yamey or Namey. Each panelist will get a truth or not a truth and attempt to tell us if it is or if it ain't. It's a yay or a nay. Give us your answer and win a point. Or not. All right. M, yay me or nay me. The Nobel Prize for a tweet has to come next. Twitter is now part of the Library of Congress. Yay or nay. Twitter is now part of the Library true, of Congress. True, true. Yep, that's right. It is indeed true. I mean, that is billions and They're billions. saving tweets. They're saving tweets. They have to archive them. Amazing. They're going to know when I had a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm tying my shoes. <laughs> All right. Question number two is for Sydney. The word quark was invented by a U.S. physicist who owned a farm. And found that the duck's call from the pond had a very imposing frequency. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, that's actually a nay. Uh, actually, a word up. It originated with Murray Gelman and was ta uh, taken. It was taken to be a nonsense word in James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. All right. Next for future guru. Are you ready? Hoagie. Okay. 
Okay, Hoagie Carmichael's 1943 song, I'm a cranky old yank in a clanky old tank on the streets of Yokohama with my Hunalunu mama doing the Beto Beto flat on my Cito Hirohito blues, is listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the song with the longest title. Yes, it's Yes, true. you're absolutely right. And I'm just thanking, <laughs> <laughs> thanking the Lindens. You didn't make me say that again. <laughs> All right, number four is for Professor. As European travelers have since been stranded around the world, including the Norwegian Prime Minister, iPad is thankfully keeping his country's government afloat. Yeah, it's a true or false, but the country is Norway. Um, is iPad keeping his country afloat, the government? True. That's right. It's true. He's using an iPad from his hotel room to run his government. To run his country. Yeah, cool. I mean, that, that's phoning it in. Okay. Um, according to USDA statistics, Americans ate 10 times as much chicken in 2008 than in 1960. Uh, I'd say true. Actually, it's a nay. It's only three times as much, not ten times as much. Uh, well, I'm eating ten times as much. Okay, but I guess I'm not average. <laughs> there hey, you I go. Have, You're above average, Em. I have fried chicken, chicken for dinner. Exactly. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> All right, number six is for Sydney. While we have state flowers and birds, no state has its own bacteria yet. Yay. Uh, that's I mean, actually. Nay. A, is it a yay or a nay? <laughs> nay. Okay, it's a nay. Yeah, Wisconsin has just appointed the cheese making bacterium, Lactococcus lactus, as its official state microbe. No word on New York's, but it's rumored that California will be for Botox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Future watch guru. It, watch it about California. Come on, people. Uh, all right. Well, think, think of a better microbe and we'll send it to, to Arnold. Okay. There you go. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower was president of Columbia University. Nay. Yay. He was. Okay. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I know. I never knew that. That's surprising. Well, I, I give it to the guy. Yeah, so do I. All right, number eight is for Professor. If you like to watch birds, you can now wear a hummingbird feeder. True. That's right, it's true, and it's pronounced eye to eye. And it will bring the bird right to you. And if you act now, we'll throw in a free seagull feeder, which is a <laughs> pot of popcorn on your head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> the man who originated James Bond, Ian Fleming, also wrote a cookbook about delicate and delicious mushrooms. Hmm, I'd say, um, well, he was a cook, we know that, so I'd say yay. Actually, that's a nay, but he oh. did write the children's story... Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Ian Fleming wrote Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. New meaning to the word bang. I, I know. <laughs> and number 10 is for Sydney. The majority of Twitter traffic is from the United States. Yay. Uh, that's a nay. Nearly 60% of Twitter traffic comes from outside of it. All right, future guru. Coca-Cola's new design is 100% green. The packaging is made out of sugarcane byproducts completely. Yay. You're absolutely right, and that is three billion bottles shipped daily. I'm not drinking green Coca-Cola, sorry. I like mine nice and brown like it should be. I like my yeah. sugar high. <laughs> All right. And and number, 12. In a can. number 12 is for Professor. What NASA has introduced a way you can go to Mars from your computer with a new site called menarefrommars.com. False. 
That's right. It's false. It's called BeAMartian.com. That's right. BeAMartian.com, launched by NASA and JPL. <laughs> I don't know why they just didn't do it on Second Life. I mean, really. Okay, M. Drinking five eight-ounce glasses of water a day means a 54% less chance of suffering a fatal heart attack than those who drink, uh, let's say, two glasses or less each day. Hmm. 58% reduction in heart attacks? Drinking that mm-hmm. much water. Uh, I'd say it's a nay. Actually, it's a yay. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. And you have to drink more water. Everybody, all too the men. Too much chicken, in the too audience. little Everybody water. To to water. Yeah. That's right. Tastes yeah. like chicken. Yeah. All right. And number 14 is for Sydney. In the confined space of an easy bake oven, a 100 watt bulb can create temperatures of 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Yay. That's right. It is a yay. That's right. And that's how many of us started baking cookies at an alarmingly early age. Okay, future guru, this is for you. An average of 26 people die in elevators each year in the United States. Boy, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, I would say uh, it's a big number. A lot of people statistically, uh, yay. 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 To scale that, there are 26 car deaths every five hours. Mm. Number 16 is for Professor. A quarter pounder with cheese has three times the calories as a venti or 20 ounce cafe mocha with whipped cream. Yum. (laughs) False. That's right. It's false. They are about the same. Drink your fat coffee. That's right. Can you believe that? A quarter pounder with cheese has as many calories as a, as a venti latte. All right. Well, the score is one, two, three, four, and I love it as we move on. Because now it's time for the audience to play. I said what? That's right. Audience only competes for a limited edition prize by guessing who originated this famous quote. Please type it out in local chat. And the quote is, more than iron, more than lead, more than gold, I need electricity. I need it more than I need lamb or pork or lettuce or cucumber. I need it for my dreams. And I'll repeat, more than iron, more than lead, more than gold, I need electricity. I need it more than I need lamb or pork or lettuce or cucumber. I need it for my dreams. And it wasn't Franklin or Edison. Yes, Tegan Firecaster. It was the famous computer Raptor in 1984 who was fed a program and spouted out prose from the book, The The Policeman's Beard is Half Constructed. And if we feed you words, could you come up with some prose, maybe a haiku? We'd love to read some. Share those with a science theme, then at Treat TV. We'll be right back. See you in a few minutes. When does it start? Every Tuesday night, Doctor, at the same time, 7 p.m. Pacific, each week. And uh, what happens? The Tiny's Cat and Emmo open, and they are the most hilarious opening act anywhere. I see. Uh, Yes, uh, and then? Oh, my God, the show is so funny. We have the intelligentsia of Second Life on, and they are brilliant. It's great. The audience is the best in Second Life. Hmm, uh, what else, Pookie? My co-host is this amazingly gorgeous wolf. Well, what seems to be the problem? No problem at all, Doctor. I want you on the show. I'll do anything to get a great panelist. Welcome back to the first question. 
And welcome back. Oh, yeah. It's time for Nugget of Knowledge. Stump Hydra for the point. Much easier said than done. The man has a sixth sense for gold or coal. I uh, know my nuggets and how to sift the value from the fool's gold. I'm ready. Bring it on. All right, here we go. This is M. Linden's nugget. True or false? Prim is an adjective. Um, well, prim means primitive. Primitive object. So I would say that is an adjective. Uh, an adjective because it is describing something as being a simple geometric object. It's a primitive. So yes, it's true. All right, M, tell them. Well, you can have it either way because it's it's both a noun and an adjective. Prim and proper. All right. Okay, so I got it right or I got it wrong? Well, exactly. It was one of those stumper questions. Okay, so I got it right either way then. Great. That's right. And because you got it right or you got it wrong, I'm giving him a point. Okay, Sydney. This is Sydney's negative knowledge. The brain is about 70% fat. Um, that's actually a topic of debate. Yes, it is mostly Another one. fat. Yeah, it is mostly fat, but the fat is in the form of what's called glial cells, which actually metabolize glucose and feed the neurons that actually do the thinking. So, yes, it is mostly fat, but it's glial fat. Sydney? Yes. All okay, right. I got it? Okay, yeah. cool. Okay. The next is Future Guru Haiku, and he says the web uses 5% of the world's electricity. Uh, let me think on that one. Well, I know about 30% goes to industry directly, probably home uses. Mm, I would say it's probably even less than 5%, so I'm going to say, well... Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and say that's true, because it's probably pretty close if it's not even less than that. Okay, future guru? Yes, he's right. He's got it, 5% and increasing, but you're on the money. All right. And now this is Professor Spingflowers. The infinite corridor, the infinite corridor is in California. The Infinite Corridor. Uh, I've seen that before. I believe it's a work of art, and it involves mirrors reflecting into each other. Now, if I'm thinking of the correct Infinite Corridor, I'd say that's true. And I believe it's in San Luis Obispo. Uh, perhaps. The Infinite Corridor I'm thinking of is in the building at MIT. It's the longest building on campus. Ooh. Bum, bum, okay. bum. All right. Well, you did pretty well there, Hydra, as you always do. No panel has ever been able to completely stump Hydra with nuggets of knowledge. Okay, thank you. As we move on to our next segment, now we bring out Word Up. It's a delightful enterprise to have the idle play of the imagination, and it's worth up to four points if you delight the audience with what you Thought up. Uh, Pookiepedia? Uh, it's ready for your new word. Might as well be absurd. Was that a Hydra haiku? Uh, no, Pookie. Hydra haiku is not even on my friends list. <laughs> okay, I bet he's gorgeous, on. though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into search. Eh, never mind. Doesn't exist. Okay, when Pookie says vote afterwards. The audience will be using the vote boxes to award points. Please just type in forward slash with the number of the panelists you want to win. It's very easy, forward slash one, forward slash two, forward slash three, or forward slash four. And our voting board will show the points accumulated and clear winner four points for tie three each. And those who haven't won, well, everybody gets a point in this round because I said so. Word up. It's time to reveal your magic motto to the world. M. Linden, your word up. The word up is flog, F-L-O-G. It's a flog. It's a blog where you get flogged. 
<laughs> we've and we've all been there. Okay, very good. Vlog Sydney Caramel, your word up. Directionally done. People who pretend to know where you're going, but they don't point you in the wrong direction when they should just tell you that they don't know where you're going and you should ask someone else. I like it. And I also like what you said, this synonym, that's what GPS is for, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, future guru haiku, your word up. Tachyon bundle. Ooh, and it means? It's the uh, hypothetical uh, collection of tachyon energy uh, that creates an inverse uh, black hole. Ooh, -hoo. and if you see it, you might hurry, hurry it up before supper. Okay, Professor Spingflower, your word up. The drizzle. Mm hmm and it means? Well, it describes my state of being yesterday in the studio as I guess wedged in between walls for about you know, 20 minutes or so. <laughs> All right, well, that's great, Hydra. Audience, get ready to start counting. Um, get ready to vote on your favorite word up. Hydra, can you say each of these fantastic words while our audience votes? Certainly. The first word from M. Linden was a flog. And that's a blog where you get flogged. I can mm -hmm. think of a certain special blog. <coughs> Coffee. <coughs> yeah. All right. The next one <gasps> from Sydney Caramel was directionally dumb. And that's people who pretend to know where you are going, but don't. And they point to it with their finger with 100% certainty, instead of telling you that they don't actually know and that you should ask someone else. A you know what I that is, I, I just want to say one, one thing. In New York City, there's a rule of three because everyone in New York will tell you where something is even if they don't know. You must ask at least three people, and if you get two people to match, then you know you're going in the right direction. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, taking a long road trip with a man that, you know, the woman's going to stop and ask for directions and the man's just going to keep driving until he finds a sign he recognizes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the next word from uh, Future Guru was tachyon bundle. And that's mm. a bundle of energy that creates a black hole. And I assume that's probably at the quantum foam level. And I just love saying that word, quantum foam. <laughs> Musical. And the last word from Professor Sp Sp Springflower, sorry, is berezzled. And that's the state of being lost and pixelated in second life. I know uh, the feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, we, and we have, of course, all been there. Uh, very interesting. All right. So now everybody get your votes in because I'm going to count down from 10 and we're going to go 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Stop counting. All right. And we have a tie at number one for Word Up between M. Linden with Flog and Sydney Caramel with Directionally Dumb. We've got two. Winners this week for Word Up. And when we come back, this voting board is going to look a whole lot different. See you in a few. Don't go away. When does it start? Every Tuesday night, Doctor, at the same time. 7 p.m. Pacific each week. And uh, what happens? The Tiny's Cat and Emmo open, and they are the most hilarious opening act anywhere. I see. Uh, yes, uh, and then? Oh my god, the show is so funny. We have the intelligentsia of Second Life on, and they are brilliant. It's great. The audience is the best in Second Life. Hmm, uh, what else, Pookie? My co-host is this amazingly gorgeous wolf. Well, what seems to be the problem?
No problem at all, Doctor. I want you on the show. I'll do anything to get a great panelist. Welcome back to the first question. And welcome back. Yes, five, five, four, seven, as we go into the final big heat time for Avataro E. Avataro. Panelists against each other. The type A personality game we love to play. All right, first question. NASA decided to take crowdsourcing to the next level. And that's an understatement. They have asked the general public to submit suggestions for where to point the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-resolution camera. The public suggestion tool on this site has just released the first eight incredible pictures that simply would not have been chosen otherwise. What is the name of the site which allows you to suggest and track what you want to see on Mars? That's right. It's your chance as the public, to tell NASA what you want to see. And the, the pictures were incredible. We'll either go with the site or the public suggestion tool. <laughs> Isn't that amazing that you can, mm. you know, crowdsourcing and NASA, what do you want to see on Mars? Anyone? All right. Someone in the audience has said it. In fact, someone on the panel has said it. Yes, M. Linden, it is high wish. Excellent. Yeah, wow. personally, personally, I want to see people on Mars. You can't throw a ticker tape for a robot. Men are and from question, Mars, Hydra. Yeah, but, well, except me. I'm from Jupiter. <laughs> All right, and question number two. Remember when we spoke of the happy hug? It's kind of silly, yes, but effective in gaining a physical sensation that corresponds with text-based affection. The problem is, it's just not macho enough. Mm -mm. And when you need to feel a simulation that has a different meaning, let's say a gunshot to your torso, you need this. It has a USB-powered air compressor and was designed by a surgeon. Yes, game-activated internal pneumatic pockets can simulate hits from a pistol or an Uzi, along with the sensations of explosions, stabbings, and rocket, rocket hits, but no hugs. What is this torture device called? <laughs> and people put this on willingly. You can play Call of Duty or Halo with it. Oh, so someone in the audience has typed it out. Yeah, if I wanted to feel the real thing, I'd just go to Afghanistan. Uh, Future Guru? Third Space FPS. That's right. It's the Third Space FPS gaming vest. It's not, it's not putting Great. a huggy bear in you. Okay. Great to give to people that you really love. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy, I can feel what it's like to get up. Oh. Okay, next question. Shrinkraft is the name of a web series about a cyber therapist. But shrink wrapping also refers to a new kind of brain implant that essentially melts into place. Ultra-thin flexible implants can record brain activity faithfully and could pave the way for better devices to monitor and control. In people with epilepsy, the arrays could be used to detect when seizures first begin and deliver pulses to shut them down. The absence of sharp surfaces improves safety with less damage and better stability. What is the base material for this implant which will more or less melt and shrink wrap your brain. Yes, Professor. Silicon. It's not silicon, no. no. Although the, someone in the audience, a few people in the audience have said it, it's not silicon. That was my favorite element. Silk. Yes, Em? Um? Is it silk? It, you better believe it. Yes, it's silk. And it doesn't come from the goat spider. All right, yeah, question, question number four. Smoking happens. It's a habit, and I'm one, not one to judge, though I prefer chewing tobacco and spores, preferably at the same time. 
Currently, <laughs> cigarette filters are made from cellulose acetate, and although technically they are biodegradable, this can take as long to 10 to 15 years. Four and a half trillion cigarette butts end up as litter. How about 100% biodegradable cigarette filter with benefits? The manufacturers say when it is placed under a thin layer of soil, it sprouts into green grass shoots or even blooming flowers. What is the name of this cigarette waste that users collect in a planter instead of in an ashtray? And right now it's also going for investment, so we don't know how much they are, but this is the theory that it's made with the flower and it has seeds in the cigarette butts. Anyone? Mm, you might have to count them down. All right. It's going to be five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is green butts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I next. Won't forget it now. Couldn't make mm -hmm. that stuff up. <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up. Uh uh. <laughs> All right, next question. 3D movies are box office boppo. But 3D is not new at all. The earliest confirmed 3D film showed to a paying audience was this film, which premiered in LA in 1922. The camera rig was a product of the film's producer, Harry Farrell, and cinematographer, Robert Elder. It was a projected dual strip in the red-green anaglyph format, making it both the earliest known film that utilized dual strip projection and the earliest known film in which analyph glasses were used. After a preview for exhibitors in press in New York City, the film dropped out of sight. It's now considered lost. What is the name of this film? Yes, Sydney. Power of Love. The Power of Love. Yes, indeed. Very good. I'd love to see that film. 1922. Well, you, you can't. It's lost. And question number six. Something different this way comes. An unknown object in the nearby galaxy M82 has started sending out radio waves, and the emission does not look like anything seen anywhere in the universe before. It certainly does not fit the pattern of supernova or microquasars, yet it is apparently on a sideways velocity and is four times the speed of light. What network of telescopes from the UK has found this mysterious source of radio waves? It's a network of radio telescopes. And someone in the audience has typed it out. Sydney? Merlin? That's right. It's the Merlin Network. All right. Next question. That's great. Sometimes in the subway, the lights dim, and I see everyone on the train as an avatar. Okay, a bit of a hallucination, I agree. <laughs> There's drugs but for that. It is, but listen to, I do, but listen to this. In advance of the April 22nd release of Avatar on DVD and Blu-ray, an interactive exhibit which turns passers-by into blue skin Navi from the film using facial recognition software captures people's images and transforms them as they watch. The morph is incredibly realistic and goes well beyond augmented reality because it isn't simply superimposing imagery. It's actually altering the underlying content in real time. I would love to see this done for Second Life because I was an avatar long before the Navi. The freestanding structure is comprised of multiple digital screens and centrally located at what? Famous L.A. shopping mall. Yes, M. The Grove. Yes, the Grove shopping mall in L.A. Okay, next question, Hydra. Question number eight. Times, they are a-changing. Once blogs were denounced by traditional news organizations until they couldn't be denied. And while we joke about the Pulitzer Prize for best tweet, this is history-making. Because for the first time... Online-only publications have won the prestigious award for editorial content. One had cartoons in video form and the other a nonprofit startup, a resource for struggling news organizations that can no longer afford to focus human resources on investigative reporting. 
Name either of the two sites which won. Sydney. Uh, ProPublica. ProPublica, or, yes. Or That's right. Um, it was Mark Fiore, a cartoonist for sfggate.com and the online arm of the San Francisco Chronicle and an investigative journalist at ProPublica. So that's All right. right. Sydney wow. gets the point. Okay, next question. Before postmodernism, there was the horizon. And after Impressionism came Cubism. As the Netherlands remained neutral in World War I, Dutch artists were not able to leave the country after 1914 and were thus isolated from the international art world, especially in Paris. Dutch painter Theo van Dosburg started looking for other artists founding this movement also known as neoplasticism in 1917. One of the best known principal members was Pierre Mondrian, who embodied its principles of ultimate simplicity and abstraction, limiting his palette also to red, yellow, and blue, and the three primary values, black, white, and gray. In 1924, however, Mondrian broke with the group after Van Dosburg proposed the theory of elementarism, proposing that diagonal line was more vital than the horizontal or the vertical. And so he left. Is that like saying the z-axis is more important than the x or y? Anyway, <laughs> what, what is the name of this important Dutch art movement? Yes, M. M. Linden. If it's diagonals, it's elementarism. If it's, um, if it's the entire movement, it's de Stiel. Yes, it is de Stiel after the style. Very good and, and marvelous indeed. Okay. All right. Number 10. Anthony Masters' book, The Man Who Was M, <laughs> The Life of Charles Henry Maxwell Knight, asserts Ian Fleming conceived the plan that lured Hess into flying to Scotland in May of 1941 to negotiate Anglo-German peace with Churchill and resulted in Hess's capture. Fleming possibly conceived of a plan to use this British occultist to trick Rudolf Hess into attempting to contact a fake cell of anti-Churchill Englishmen in Britain. But this plan was not used because Hess had already flown to Scotland in an attempt to broker peace behind Hitler's back. Who was the infamous British occultist he thought to use? Wow, it sounds like a James Bond movie. Uchigura? Crowley? That's right, it was Aleister Crowley. Absolutely, the very infamous Aleister Crowley. <laughs> okay, Next question. We are, of course, hoping to have a show in 2013. Heck, by then, I think the first question should be playing on your mobile. But for some, the end of the world is scheduled for December 31st, 2012. While most of us will sweat it out in that underground shelter in our suburban basements, I mean, how retro is that? One company envisions a network of underground shelters located near major cities across the U.S. in spacious quarters for up to one year to ride out the potential events. And quotes, at 10 million USD, they are luxury shelters, possibly a new term. Equipped with everything you need for survival, including computers, exercise equipment, medical facilities with abundant storage areas. Spaces in the bunkers are likely to be in the U.S. 50,000 price range, and so far, over 1,000 applications have been received to reserve a place. What is the name of the company who is building these? Yes, M. Linden. Vivos. Vivos, my shelter. Vivos. <laughs> okay, you, that really should have been Vault Tech, but I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay, question uh, from the uh, Fallout 3 game. All right. Question number 12. This robot can draw. Drawing has been practiced by every civilization since the dawn of humankind. Now robot kind joins in as computer scientists at Goldsmiths, University of London, have devised an algorithm that allows the robot to approximate an artist, as well as recreating the thought process that unconsciously occurs when drawing someone's face. 
In particular, the research focuses on face sketching. Whose work might hang in the first museum of robot art? I see that too, the first museum of robotic art. Anyone? All right, count them down. All right, so five, four, three, two, one. And the uh, answer is, oh, oh we oh. got a last minute one future. Picasso. No, that's not a robot. That's a Spanish guy. <laughs> All right, the answer <laughs> is zero, Icon. <laughs> All right, well, we are getting down. It is still close, and it could be anybody's show. It's 10, 8, 6, 7. Come on, as we go on. In the final few questions, she is an American viral video comedian and a life caster. Her popularity is such that a video about her wanting to order a cheeseburger got 600,000 YouTube views in a week. She is known for a 300-page iPhone bill, which earned her international attention and celebrity as of december 2009 she's got about a million twitter followers and her videos have attracted 64 million viewers she does her work with a 400 cannon power shot and this i love a 12 dollar green rug from ikea to create her green screen she was a contestant on the price is right i think i should make an avatar and ask her to be on the first question sydney caramel tell us who is she? I, Justine. Absolutely, I, Justine. What a phenomena. I can cheeseburger with I, Justine. All right, and question number 14. He is a legend, and of course, we hope he is watching tonight. As the creator of Spore and The Sims, Will Wright can pretty much ride his own ticket. He just signed an agreement with this channel to produce programming that engages an audience known in the game industry for the systemic and scientific way that he approaches game design. He was approached to bring it to TV. Why can't, uh, while we can't wait to see what he comes up with, we really can't wait for him to see this show. You betcha. <laughs> what channel on cable is Mr. Wright? teaming up with to deliver a program. Hopefully ours. M? Science Channel. That's right. It's the Science Channel. All right. Next question. Fuel cell and microorganisms are the wave of the future from a modded virus which splits water molecules to microbes which secrete liquid diesel. The Navy has been using small, lightweight microbial fuel cells to power sensors, and now its goal is to develop one that's powerful enough to steer a small robotic watercraft. Think of it as a battery that runs on mud in a microbial fuel cell. Organisms feed on available nutrients and generate an electric current as they metabolize the food. Bum, bum. The Navy calls it a device with the potential to revolutionize naval energy. And it's working with researchers at the University of Massachusetts on a microbe called what? What is the Navy's newest? Best microbe. Yes, M. Geobacter. Yes, the Geobacter. And that takes M. Linden to 12 points. And folks, we have a winner. That's right. M. Linden, you have won tonight's edition of The First Question. Yay! Congrats, Sam. Good job. Unbelievable. Congrats. I, unbelievable. This is hard. That's, that's great. These balloons are for you. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I love what Arminus said. M gets a W. M for the win. <laughs> Very good. And thank you yeah. all. You were fantastic. Yeah, this is at least as hard as Jeopardy. I'll give it that. It is as hard as Jeopardy. I'm telling you. It, <laughs> yeah. Well, congrats, M. And yeah. now, audience, will you take us out tonight? Who originated this famous quote? Living is more a question of what one spends than what one makes. And I'll say it again. Living is more a question of what one spends 
than what one makes. And Tegan Firecaster, you are tonight the queen of quotes because indeed it is Marcel Duchamp. And living in Second Life means spending time making things and making things happen. And it's kind of the best of all worlds. Oh, I am with you on this one, baby. All right. Well, stay tuned to the Studio Dome. Oh, no one guessed the secret word tonight, which was patina. In the artistic vein that we wanted to be in. Anyway, stay tuned yeah, to the Studio Dome because we're going to see you here next week at 7 p.m. The only place to be on a Tuesday night. Thank you for watching and to all who tune in. And our eternal thanks to Rob Webb Soothsayer, who is our head stage manager and director to the stars, Pet Love Pet Shop. And a special thanks to our guru, Paradox Olbers, and thank you to the panel, M, Sydney, Future Guru, and Professor. Thank you all for being part of this momentous night. Thanks for having us. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Great. What a show, Pookie. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thanks, and Yay, sure Pookie. Thing. Yay. Bookmeister. Thank you. And thank you very much, everyone. The best audience in Second Life as well. Feel free to embed this show as you wish. Thank you all for coming. Remember, the show will be available tomorrow on iTunes. Either go to iTunes and search for the first question or go to Treat TV and subscribe from there. And a big shout out to Rebecca. And thank you, Hydra. Thank you, Pookie. And good night, Mr. Rosedale, wherever you are. 